every nation. Yeah. And it didn't put no stipulation on race or anything like no. that. It only says no bloodline. Right. You know, you read that again. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Mm -hmm. That means whoever keeps the commandments. Yeah, absolutely. That's working righteousness. Uh -huh. uh, according to Deuteronomy 6 25. Absolutely. Uh, verse 36. Uh -huh. The word which mighty one sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Yeshua Mashiach. He is ruler of all. Now, you have to understand that Peter. to these Gentiles, he's speaking to these new converts, so we have to understand who exactly who he's talking to, because it may not apply in a certain way to a certain people, but the message ultimately is still just one. Go ahead, leading us all together. Go ahead. Verse 37, that word I say ye know, that word I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee. After the baptism which John preached, mm -hmm. our mighty one anointed Yeshua of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for mighty one was with him. Stop. So we know he's breaking down the story of everything that's going on. Let's look at their reaction to what he's saying. Let's go down to verse 44. <laughs> While Kepha yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision right. which believed were astonished. <laughs> as many as came with Kepha, because uh -huh. that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. Stop. You still have people who's teaching that those weren't really Gentiles, Well, Right. But then why would, uh, it says those of the circumcision, why would they be astonished? Like, huh? and, and you know what's, what's interesting is, is uh -huh. uh, they don't, they didn't, you didn't have Hebrews running around Israel uncircumcised. Right. <laughs> they, they, they enforced the law in the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. You didn't have them running around uncircumcised. Right, 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 right. These right. events here took place in the land of Israel. Right, right. And so, um, after this one, let's go to um, 2 Peter chapter 3. This is the last one. Because the purpose of this actually is to soften some of the hearts that are hard that are hard against Paul, Gentiles, the other nations, other nations actually coming to coming into this truth. Certain falsehoods to also open up some eyes about what the vision of Peter uh, on, on the housetop actually meant. I mean, this is meant to do all of this, but there's a whole lot of confusion like this. three or four things yes. we took care of. Mm -hmm. And now, this one is going to sum it all up. Verse 15, go ahead. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. An account that the long suffering of our ruler is salvation, even as our beloved brother Shaul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, uh -huh. speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Let me stop you here. Because it says, uh, on the account, this is the epistle of Peter now. He says, on account of uh, the long suffering of our master, his salvation, even as our beloved brother. So, who are you probably talking to at this point? <laughs> yeah. You know, he's probably talking to us right now. Right. You know, so, and he knew, I mean, maybe God gave him the foresight to see this happen today. Yeah. But it was sure enough happening then. But it's amazing how this is still happening to this day. I mean, the children of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they're alive and well. You, there's nothing, and some of you all listening to this, you want to bash, that's fine. But you know what? I mean, but if you can't hear these words, maybe they're not meant for you. You know, because we understand that there's just won't get it. Right. You know, and I'm not going to take it personally. I'm not going to look at you as a bad person because I'm not your judge. You know, we're only doing we're only doing the job that was given to us. You know, but in terms of what's going on with the um, Peter is telling us how to handle it. Go ahead. 
16. As also in all his epistles, speak in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Now, wait a minute. So, we can't expect this thing to be easily understood. Some people, because his word is, his word is are, are hard to be understood, what they hate against him. It's confusing. He's contradicting himself. He's lying. No, this is why you're saying this. Go ahead. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own, own destruction. destruction. Now, actual translation says, well, they which are untaught and unstable, they twist these scriptures. And it, it's, it's interesting because I run into a lot of brothers who are actually unlearned. They display their ignorance by, by what comes out of their mouth. Uh, when they quote scripture, and what they do is they twist uh, scripture. They turn, they, they, they make Gentiles come out to be Israelites and, and uh, strangers Israelites. Even in the Torah, they attempt to say that this is speaking of Israelites when the stranger is mentioned. But that's just a sign of being untaught, unlearned, and uh, therefore those who do that, they, they just twist the scripture. Well, for example, you can give examples. Let's say when Paul says, um, what's some of the things that he, that he says about the law? Um, that the law is a uh, curse unto them. Right. Which keep it, oh, well, uh, that, uh, sit, uh, what, what, how's that paraphrase? Well, the, the, law, the, the law is a curse for those who, it was a curse unto Israel because Israel broke the covenant. And if you break it, it's going to be a curse to you. Just like if you break a common law of the land, right. it's going to be a curse to you. You're going to jail. The most, high, the most high said in the law, I set before you this day a blessing and, and a, a curse. curse. Shoes. Exactly. As simple as that. Well, they use Paul's writings to say that you don't have to keep the law anymore. You're not under the law, but uh, under grace. Well, if the people knew what grace was, they wouldn't use that to say that, you know, the law is done away with. No, the thing is, yes, we're not under the law of sacrifice because which law are we talking about? The law of sacrifice. No more animals have to die. But under grace, because there's a grace period. Now after the Messiah sacrificed his skin, uh, sacrificed, laid down his life, and shed his blood, the Levitical priesthood is done away with. There's no immediate retribution for sin anymore. We're under a grace period. That doesn't stop, they said, but shall we sin? Break the law so that um, so that grace may abound. Hey, mighty will forbid. That's right. And see, but we get that twist, just like it says right here. Uh -huh. I got a scripture I'm going to bring ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. Yes. And we know sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. What law? You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Wait a minute, this was in the New Testament, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. What fiery indignation is he talking about, that's sir? The that's the lake of fire. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> the second death. <laughs> okay, okay. It's a done deal. <laughs> it's a done deal. I tremble every time I read that. But so. if we can, uh, you know what? Um, Let's, let's continue uh, this one to the, uh, to, the last two, to, to the last two chapters. I mean, the last two verses. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. Well, you know what? Well, I'll just go straight through it because I, I, I think I just wanted to speak for myself. Yeah. Uh, pick it up at uh, 15. We're going to mention it again. An account that the long suffering of our ruler is salvation. Mm -hmm. Even as our beloved brother, Shaul, mm -hmm. you notice I keep calling him our beloved, beloved brother. brother. <laughs> beloved, go ahead. Even as our beloved brother, Shaul, mm -hmm. also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, mm -hmm. as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Mm -hmm. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, 
lest you also be led astray. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Beware lest you also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. Right. But grow in grace uh -huh. and in the knowledge of our ruler. Grow in this great spirit while you have this time to do it. Right. That's what this means. People let the word grace just fly over their head. No, it's been a beautiful period right now. But does that mean that we have the free range to do whatever we want right. to do? We can't willfully sin. Yeah. We can't willfully break Torah. Go ahead. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our ruler and savior, Yahshua, Hamashiach, uh -huh. to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And with that, um, hopefully um, God will add a blessing to the reading and the presenting of his word. And with that, we say, Shalom. Peace out.